Welcome to Staying Relevant, the podcast hosted by two bestest of best pals, Blood Brothers and all of that, Peter James, Jonathan Joseph Wicks and Sam Thompson. Now, this is going to be an unbelievable episode because Pete has... uh, (laughs) He's asked me to tell some of the stories. So what's going to happen on this one? Firstly, yeah, so. um, I will be swearing and uh, I'm, I'm not still not drinking on a Friday now. Still feels um, a bit grim. But if you don't like that, go f- uh, Make sure you rate, review, do all that crap. Follow us on Instagram at Stan Rhythm Podcast, on TikTok and Snappy C uh, and YouTube. Subscribe, do all that shite. Um, this is Monday's episode, which means you can watch it on Friday and then Thursday we'll do the bonus episode, which you can watch on Sunday, which makes it Monday, Monday Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday Sunday. Sunday. Sam is going to lead today. Sam's not going to lead today. Sam is leading today's episode <laughs> um, where he's going to tell you about the tour. I may have to butt in if he gets it wrong, which I, <laughs> which I imagine is highly likely because this involves storytelling <laughs> and Sam is about as good at storytelling as a... Um, a as a flannel. <laughs> I'm, I'm, already, I'm already nervous. I'm already um, terrified. But he is he is wearing a, a broad range of colours today, <sighs> um, which, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm surprised by. I don't know what to do with the broad range of candy floss pink and pale blue. <laughs> with that, a, do they not work? With a khaki croc. They they don't. With a khaki croc? Do they not? I feel like, I feel like two pastels together. I feel like, that, but that's not pastel, oh. and that's khaki. Uh. <laughs> so you've just got the one pastel with two other... Fucking awful colours. Are they? You look great. I, you're right, I do. I think you um, look great. And you're still wearing your lanyard as well. The lanyard is coming with me anytime I do anything Stan Relevant related because I am AAA accredited. There was actually a, a moment in one of the live shows where Zara <laughs> tries to uh, come into the venue and she basically couldn't get in because there was quite a big crowd outside. And they were like, well, just give him your lanyard, Pete. And he went, no. <laughs> he was like, no, no, just give her. Also, don't give her a triple A clearance. No. <laughs> give her a double A clearance. It's yeah, like we she don't have, have different A's. She can have double A, but she's not having the, the triple A. No. I just told a story there. Yeah, and um, it got. No yeah, it wasn't response. great. It wasn't great. It was my first story. That Absolutely I was like, out there. no response. Yeah. But we have been on tour. I don't know whether you know. I don't know whether we, we don't like to talk about, about it enough. It. Um, we, uh, we, we posted a lot about it and, uh, oh, this was very cool. Actually, recently I just put up a, uh, a photo of annoying Pete with a, uh, with a rape alarm and, uh, the amount of messages I've had, by the way, on Instagram about your voice. Yes, my voice was a state, but that is because, um, as you can imagine, we're now six Six days. When they listen six, to this, six, six days in. Yeah, when you listen to this, six shows. Uh, but at the time of recording, we're five shows in. And uh, as you can imagine, I do an awful lot of talking during the tour. Um, <laughs> Sam is more a physical entertainer. Um, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, it means that you just jump around, um, uh, jump on things, off things. Basically, Sam does parkour on stage <laughs> whilst I talk through it. So my voice has started to go because Sam's just saying, parkour, parkour, <laughs> uh, whilst dumping around all over the shop. But you know, we have spoken actually about, you know, we spoke about Newcastle, Glasgow, actually just those two in the last episode. We haven't spoken about London that has happened since. The first London gig, Shepherd's Bush. Manchester, which got wild. And we're going to discuss that in a little bit. Yeah. Well, well, we're going to discuss it as much as Pete would like to discuss. I'm happy because I feel like I need to tell my story. He He really, really does. And we did Cardiff. The Welsh are wild. Uh, but we've got Birmingham coming up, actually, which is going to be pretty intense. That's Why 6, is it going to be? Yeah, because it's the biggest venue, uh, Birmingham, 6,000. It's also the one that's cost us the most. Um, has it? Yes, because the screen in Birmingham, because there's 6,000, has cost us 15,000 pounds off. for one night. No way, is that so, true? So, yes, it's absolutely true, uh, because I've been through the budget and I'm quite surprised, um, because I couldn't give a fuck if you can see or not. How big Certainly is not screen? for 15 grand. Wait, where is is the screen behind us the, the big screen yeah but we've also got two separate screens for people that are further back because we want to make sure that everyone's involved we care so much that we are now paying you to come and watch so although you've spent 30 pounds on a fucking ticket uh, <laughs> that's fuck all in comparison to what i've spent on just making sure that you have a good time <laughs> so thanks yeah it's gonna be amazing though i can't wait well where to begin i suppose i think the it's only right to really begin from the start 
Well, no, because we've done the start. Um, but that is, this is, I so think. I'm going to let you just in on a little, before Sam gets carried away with this, I've asked Sam to lead this and tell the stories. So what Sam has started with is, is in, in his own ways, once upon a time. Um, <laughs> stories are best when you start at the beginning. Yes. Um, We're going to start from the beginning. Um, so let's start from, I'll, gi I'll give you the cue. Okay, good. Okay, let's start nice. from our last uh, update, tour update. Um, uh, so from there, Sam, um, what happened? So we left the podcast studio and instantly things happened. <laughs> Pete looks really disappointed already. We basically jumped on our tour bus, which picked us up from the podcast studio it actually didn't we had to get oh, a cab shit, from yeah. here to york way um in houston so we had to get a cab yeah. to our own tour bus because we went although, to houston. although it's our tour bus it doesn't stop where we want it to yeah. um, i think he actually gets a little bit nervous the poor driver jack i feel like whenever he drops us off at a venue as well pete he always like fucks off really quickly and then refuses to pick us up after the show we have to get a cab after the show even though we've paid thousands for the bus and I feel like it's because he's embarrassed by us, but you know he hasn't said that. Those are those are our words, not his. No, I mean he's embarrassed by one of us, that being Pete. And actually, it, it it leads on quite nicely because we then did a little tour on the bus around London. Yes, that was fun. Pete hated it, but it was really, really enjoyable. I bought my megaphone. Actually, no, I lost my megaphone. And then Beardy, our tour manager, bought a megaphone from his house. I'm going to own up to something. I hid his megaphone. Did you actually? Did you actually? Yes. Um, you fucker. I didn't realise that uh, actually that was the worst thing I could have done because his <laughs> megaphone was shit. Yeah. So what happened was Beardy bought an industrial megaphone. Oh, it was so good. Which was fucking it, mental. You know those batteries? Pete, you'll know this. You're the kind of guy who will know this, like the size of batteries. Are they, what, were they triple A's? What, what, no, what were, the, what, were the, what were the big rectangle thick batteries? Um, the your big square ones. The big, yeah, okay, fine. I thought you might know that, but yeah, they, the, the, they... They're called the Duracell Big Squares. His, uh, his, his new industrial <laughs> megaphone took those big fuckers, and it is so powerful. So it was only right to lean out of the bus window with this megaphone and just announce our arrival to London. And it went incredibly fucking well, didn't it, Pete? Um, no, and I'll tell you why it didn't go well, because at one point um, when someone cut up the bus, Sam leant out of the window with a megaphone and started saying, you prick, that is not the highway code. Um, now, you think that would be quite bad. It was really bad because the person was driving a convertible. So he heard everything. He then started pointing with the megaphone going wanker at the person from the window whilst I was sat in the window. Yeah. So that person then thought it was me. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure on some, somewhere on Twitter you can go, Pete Wicks, what a prick, seen him on his bus. Well, actually, that's not people. true because the guy did cut up our bus really badly and he was against the highway. Code. Yeah, we then found out um, that uh, bus driver Jack had uh, informed us that actually he was in the wrong lane. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it was actually our <laughs> fault in the first place. Um, but So I, I, I apologies, but you were a man driving a mini convertible. So you kind of deserve everything. It was so fun, though. We were driving around Piccadilly Circus, Oxford, Oxford Square. That's not the one. Pick and text something. What the fuck's the square? Leicester Square. Leicester Square, Oxford Circus. Pete's got his head in his hands. And, uh, and, and we were screaming at the bus going, do you know us? Do you know us? And people were looking at us like, no, we don't. But then there were a few people, Pete, I feel like, who did know us, particularly those two lovely ladies who we bumped into, who then we met later that night. Yes. You, do you want me to carry uh, yeah, well, that story? Well, really nice okay, segue. Got okay, no, it was a nice segue for me to actually tell the story. Um, well done. You're, you're Actually, you're getting better at story prep. Yeah, story prep. I'm introing. Yeah. You're you're like the, um, you, when you have a head chef. Yeah. And you have sous the, chef? Yeah, no, you're not even sous chef. You're the vegetable prep. So you're the person that goes in four hours before everyone else and cuts the vegetables for everyone to cook later. I love that. Um, no, there was a lovely um, uh, two ladies who we saw, um, I think it was just off Regent Street, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. But we couldn't hear them but I, we couldn't work out what they were saying but they said we, they, I think they were they were obviously coming that evening so Sam was shouting hello to them when we got to the venue about an hour later um, they had run from Regent Street but when we were on a bus to Shepherd's Bush managed to get on the tube arrived at the hotel at the same time as us out of breath very sweaty 
but very nice of them. And I went, we saw you on Regent Street. Um, and they were, they, were, they were very enthused. I want to know how they actually got there, though, because they were fucking fun. So they absolutely pegged it, and then they had to jump on the bus. One of them nearly got trapped in the door, apparently. Oh but God. she made it, but they were seriously out of breath as we got out on the bus. And I, that dedication, I really enjoy. Actually, there was also someone who wore a Pete Wicks T-shirt, which is the only time oh we've God, seen yeah. it. Oh, my God, yeah. With loads of different faces on it. Very good dedication. I was actually on the Pete Wicks phone, though. I was I was lower down. I was by your na- by the navel. It was basically a Pete Wicks with like, and it just had a tiny little Sam, just by the belly button. Yes, um, but yeah, thank you very much for that. But let's go back to being on the bus because you've missed a prime. Well, prime... actually, I was gonna just gonna segue into it quite nicely. Oh, okay. Well, let's try and do it chronologically. Well, they were obviously running, and actually, we had our own runner on the bus. Uh, reason what, being off is, the bus? but well, actually, yeah, because what we do is before every show, we go around each city that we go to, and we just think it's a nice personal touch if we film some shots around the city, just making sure that you know we're sort of like part of the culture. And so, you know, we wanted to go across London Bridge, go past the Houses of Parliament, the the London Eye, and we had these like, amazing ideas. Well, Pete had an amazing idea of this like shot that we were going to have the bus driving past like one of the bridges and like one of the big monuments. And so, what we were going to do is we 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 told uh, our videographer, Ed. Ed video, video Ed. Video Ed. Uh, Ted, our videographer, who's been on tour with us, been an absolute legend. and um, He's been well paid. He's been very well paid. And Pete basically went, right, if you just jump off the bus here, mate, and then run <laughs> forward to the next sort of... Pete, what am I looking for? Checkpoint, right? And we're going to drive past that checkpoint and you're basically just going to film us doing that. The problem is that Pete hadn't accounted for the fact there was no traffic on the roads at all. Because I obviously come into London quite a lot and it's always gridlocked. So I just imagined, Ted's quite tall, he's about six foot three. I imagined he he could run faster than what he did. Um, Keeping up with a 20 mile an hour bus is a struggle, apparently, especially as you're going under bridges that had no pedestrians. You had to go up the the stairs, down the stairs, up the stairs, down the stairs, under every bridge. But I I thought he'd just be able to jump back on once he got the shot. Um, But we lost him. We fully fucking lost in the poor bloke. We have on speakerphone, right? And he's literally going, yeah, I can't see you guys anymore. It's because like, we're fucking going at like 20 mile an hour. We're already by the Houses of Parliament. He's about 10 minutes drive behind us. And Pete goes, it's fine. Just tell him to run. The Pete, he's holding a camera. And it's the first time our videographer has ever given us lip. And he goes, why don't you fucking run? And Pete went, mate, he'll be able to clock up 12k easily. <laughs> There's no chance in fucking hell. Uh, saying that he could do, he could go 12 mile an hour, which, by the way, Ted, our videographer, inquisitive man, uh, decided to then look up on the internet and went, that's Olympic level running. <laughs> and he was like, well, There's no way I can do that. Well, even at 12 mile an hour, it's the equivalent of doing 10k in 30 minutes. <laughs> he was so sweaty when he got back on the bus. Um, yeah, he was. He was sweaty. Um, and he was not impressed, if I'm honest with you. So that kind of put a dampener on on doing the other oh. venues or the other monuments that I wanted to do. And then well, London went really well, though. We turned up to, uh, to, to the theatre and there was a massive queue outside and some of our nearest and dearest are there as well, which is a little bit nerve wracking. None of mine. Yeah, no, um, they were. Your agent was there. Oh, yeah. Gemma was there. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Oh, and Vicky, Vicky Patterson was there. Oh, yeah, there. loads of mine were there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it was it was really nerve-wracking. It was the most nervous that I've ever been before a show to the point where actually I pissed Pete off where he didn't want to speak to me. No, because before the show, I try and prep my cards and write bits down and, and extra bits for, for different venues. So I like to just get that done. Um, so I, I normally leave Sam to be babysit by Ted and Charlotte and everyone else. Um, but instead, he came over and spent the entire time telling me how nervous he was and he didn't think he could do it. Um, he thought it was all too much for him. Uh, dead serious, which made me actually worry that he was going to be able to do anything on stage. <laughs> Um, Bear in mind, I don't even do much on stage. It, it, <laughs> it was a struggle. He was nervous about Zara being there. Then Sam invited uh, his entire entourage into the dressing room pre-show whilst I was trying to prepare uh, and write my things. That was his mum, his sister, his girlfriend, uh, Pippa, her friends, all of her family. About 15 people in there who um, I was then having to say hello to whilst trying to write the, the little bits that I do before the show. So that was fun. I really enjoyed that. I can tell when Pete's over something as well because he like goes and hides in the corner. So I went and hid in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then someone asked for one of his Guinnesses. 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, they're kind of Pete's. And they were like, yeah, but there's like six. And I was like, they're kind of Pete's. <laughs> you don't come to my dressing room and take my drink. If yeah. you're going to come to the dressing room, bring your own. It was very, it was, it's it was a BYOB affair. It was touching. In the guys. dressing rooms. It's BYOB. All right. This is not, we don't put it on for you. All right. It's bring your own. It was very, very nerve wracking. I don't think I've ever been more nervous before, like any sort of show I've ever done, to be fair. I don't know why I was so nervous, but I really was. And I was really hoping to latch on to Pete and sort of like, you know, hope, hope that he would sort of like instill me with a little bit of confidence. He just told me to fuck off. Because it's not my job to instill you with confidence, um, because I'm busy instilling myself with confidence. <laughs> because I, I worry that the show's shit every night um, <laughs> and have done for four months. Um, whereas the turning up bit for you, I, I think you can manage. But that night, just the turning up was a struggle. Yeah, really. Uh, do you know what I noticed as well? I hadn't had a poo that evening. I hadn't had a nervous poo. And I actually think that contributes to it because I had a stomachache. So next up, what happened... But genuinely, um, I think that was what it was. Sam's had a stomachache for the entire fucking week that we were on tour, if I'm honest with you. He's constantly just going, oh, I just don't feel I've got a dicky tummy. Yeah. Um, and that is mostly because he's... Uh, I mean, I don't know what, what's going on with your bowels, but they... Yeah, they, they struggle, don't they, whilst on tour? When I get nervous, when I get anxious, yeah, I they, they I really get gassy and bl bloated and weird. But, you know, enough about my bodily functions. Oh, we thanks. smashed it! We fucking smashed it out of the park! It was unreal. It was so fucking good. For the first London gig, it was good. They were a different crowd, London. Um, they they weren't as wild as what we have up north, and I think that's because they're so used to having lots of different shows, so in comparison, ours wasn't as impressive as uh, when you go up to Newcastle and Glasgow. But we do love Newcastle and Glasgow. We do, we do, because you gave us such a great reaction in comparison to London. It was still really, really good. It was just a different crowd. It was a bit give and take, you know. You've got to give some take a bit, you know. It's got to be an entertainment show. And we entertained. Parkour. <laughs> yeah, we fucking did bits. We did stuff. And it was great. But look, the show was amazing. There was also a massive crowd outside afterwards. And we were like Justin Bieber. We were like Bieber. Sam was like Justin Bieber. Um, I was like Justin Bieber's uh, security. Um, but like, yeah, there was a big crowd waiting outside for Samuel. And it was... It Not, was... That's such a fucking lie. Everyone was going, Pete! Because Sam had left me again and already gone inside and I didn't realise. So I was left out there for an extra 15 minutes because I was waiting for him, but he just fucked off and left me. <laughs> um, so I just mopped up the desserts of people that were left there. Um, so fun, though. It was. Fun. But then, anyway, the, the most important part for that night for me was the after party. Now, this is the bit I didn't go on, so unfortunately... What a shocker. I... I don't have... What a shocker. Well, we went to a strip club. Well, you went to a strip club. Oh, you sound so disgusted because he goes um, uh, once a year with me. <laughs> um, and this I have been a couple of times. And this wasn't his one time. <laughs> um, I think in the end, I mean, you've got down here 20, but actually I think it was a bit more than that. Um, I think there was about 30 of us went to um, in different fractions, but my management went, um, a little bit of Sam's management went, um, all of the guys that work on the podcast went, including Paul and Edie who came along, Saffron bought her boyfriend, um, uh, who else was there? Georgia from, from Insani. My PR when uh, oh, Ted, PR, TV Ted, Ted TV Ted brought his girlfriend yeah, along. Fuck me, that was an expensive. That was an expensive weekend. Actually, that whole weekend was fucking expensive. <laughs> and I'll get on to why it was that expensive. But I did get someone a strings, um, uh, some strings tender, and they stole it. What's tender? What's tender? Strings oh. have got their own money in there. Yeah, but, I know that. That you, you can use as legal tender in Mate, certain Apparently, shops. so I, I got told this, right, and that you were basically this quite funny. Apparently, Pete was rolling around in string, not actually rolling, but like going to different groups in string fellas, giving them sort of like the history of the building. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, Pete was going to different groups being like, so if you didn't know, this was founded in 80, 1805. <laughs> and then uh, if, you're, if you, it's the only strip club to have a wine cellar underneath, actually, which is really nice. It's a great... Great, great restaurant. And this is a bit, though, that I couldn't believe when I got told this. Apparently, Pete was going around. You're going to have to confirm or deny this. Apparently, you can use the Stringfellas money in Selfridges. Uh, yes, legal tender in Selfridges. Fuck yeah. off. So I, I went to show someone some some um, uh, some tender, £25 worth. Um, and what they did was pocket it. 
He found it in his pocket. So, so what does that get him? Um, Selfridges. Twenty-five pounds worth of whatever. Fuck! So it was like real money in there. That's what legal tender is. How does that work? I I, I don't know the answer to that. You're so been... blasé about that. I feel like that's so cool. It's just a. It's like having a voucher, isn't it? Anyway, so so that was good, but Stringfellows was good, but there was about there was about thirty, and they were all on different tables, and so I did walk around. Um, I, in terms of shots, kamikazes, I hear kamikazes were on the menu. Um, One hundred and twenty shots of kamikaze we did uh, across the people there, so that's an average of of, of like four each. Um, so it was it was you know it was interesting. Um, there, there, there was a lot. There was food flying about. Um, it was an expensive night. So that will lead us on to what Charlotte has called the wholesome and the feral in the tour bus. Oh, now, yeah. Sam, would you like to lead that? Well, basically, producer Charlotte is, uh, if you didn't know, she's sort of our health queen. Um, she She is in bed early. Uh, up early at the gym running or swimming sometimes. Um, she is very, very healthy with what she eats. Uh, she's always got a good posture on her when she's writing on her laptop. But she basically is in a in an otherwise barren sort of quite disgusting hellscape that, that, that is the tour bus and the people on it. She's like the one ray of light. <laughs> of health light that just sits there on nine hour journeys pretending to type on the computer because she doesn't want to get in touch. She doesn't want to chat about what we're talking about. And uh, she's now come up with factions. <laughs> Basically, you've got the Charlotte faction, which is the, what have you called it? The wholesome faction. And uh, then the feral faction. Now, as you can tell, Team Charlotte, uh, she's Team Captain, is the, is, the, is the head of the wholesome faction. And Pete is head of the feral faction. And I think it's safe to say Pete has more followers on that bus. I will flit between Charlotte and Pete. I'm sort of closest to Charlotte, yeah, I think, Sam, than anyone Sam else. Sam sits, sits on the fence with it. I mean, he sits on the fence so much he's got splinters up his ass <laughs> Because it, he's, he's, he's between the two um, most of the time. In fact, the whole tour, he's pretty much been with uh, Team Wholesome. Yeah. Um, however... Um, following on from the after party at Stringfellas on a Friday night, which went so well for everyone involved, TV Ted had a lovely time. He had such a lovely time that he spent the entire day, the next day, throwing up on the tour bus. Which you're only allowed to toilet, wee in as well. Which you're only allowed to piss in. Um, so because of that, Sam thought, well, I want to be part of this. Understandably. Because when you see someone in that state, you think that must have been a good night. Yeah, I got, um, I got really big FOMO. Beardy was silent for the whole day um, and spent most of it just <laughs> staring at his Tamagotchi um, because I think he was struggling to speak. Uh, but after Manchester, so then what happened is, is that I then felt a little bit bad because Sam actually had a go at me in the day about going out and all the rest of it. So I cancelled the night out that I'd planned in Manchester for everyone. I'd arranged for a car to pick us all up. I'd booked a table in a club. I'd fucking done everything for everyone to come out. Charlotte had seen the state of everyone. And to be fair, Charlotte was there the night before, Team Wholesome. I don't know why she's just given herself this I'm so wholesome thing because she was there till fucking four in the morning the night before as well. Four so, in the morning? Yeah, I don't... You, I don't know why you're two, shaking. Two, two in the morning. Still quite late. Well, I don't know because she was fucking loving life. She was on the kamikazes. I know she had she had a little bit of food just to settle her stomach a bit, but she was she was banging through the kamikazes herself. So Team Wholesome isn't quite as wholesome. Really, it's Team Feral who occasionally have a wholesome day. <laughs> yeah. All right? I don't know why we're splitting this out as if she doesn't fucking do it. Because it's she... Team Feral who occasionally <laughs> feel guilty. Um, so, but next day she decided midway through. So Sam had told me, we go and going out, going out. And then she'd gone, um, well, I just I don't think I'm going to go out tonight. So I thought, okay, Ted had been thrown up all day. Um, Beardy had, had struggled. I mean, Beardy became mute on the Saturday. Beardy being tour manager, if you're only just joining us. Um, so he, he'd struggled. So I cancelled it all because I thought, well, fuck him then. Um, so I'd arranged just to go out with my friend. Um, and I thought, fuck it, I'll leave him. Fuck him. Um, we then get to the venue um, and it was it was a quiet dressing room. In it was a quiet dressing room, in actually. Comparison. People were feeling a bit rough and, and whatever else. And, yeah. um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a quiet dressing room. Um, we then get 
midway through the show um, to half time, as I like to call it. And Sam had decided, fuck it, I want to go out. So then I had to rearrange everything um, for everyone to go out. But I said to Sam, well, fine, now that you've fucked me about on this, you can pay for tonight. Yeah, fine. I'll pay for tonight. If you got last night, I'll pay for tonight. That's fine. I wasn't saying it like that. I said it in good faith. I was like, fair enough, mate. I'll yeah, take it down. Fine. It'll be on me. I'll take it. Yeah. I know you took 30 people out last night, but I'll take the five of us out. Yeah. And I was really happy to do so. He was really happy to do so. Do you know what it is, actually? And I'll tell you why he was really happy to do so. Why? Because I don't believe he had the intention of fucking paying whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was happy to do so, because lo and behold, something happened. Again, because it's happened before. Sam, what happened? We basically went to the nightclub in question, had a fucking good night, and uh, as it came time to pay, I didn't have my wallet on me. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, is that well, how you want to do I, that one? Mate, no, because I'm just used to Apple paying for everything. So I'm just tap, tappity, tip, tap. And so I, and the worst thing is, we were with tour manager Luke, who, by, by the way, is a fucking hero. He was on two nights on the bounce and was hammered second night in a row. And he, as we, was Ted. As was Ted. And we're sat on these fucking seats in this nightclub. And, and the bill comes and I go, don't worry, mate, I've got this. And, uh, and he goes, fuck, it's a big bill, mate. And I was like, don't worry, mate, look, I've got this. It's absolutely fine. And I'm thinking, look, I'm quite cool at the moment. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is pretty awesome. And so I get my phone out and I just double tap on the side. Comes up, me, and I literally turn away because I'm just so used to it just going through that I literally just went turn away and just started talking to someone on my left. And all I hear is, eh, eh. <laughs> and I turn round and Luke, the tour manager, is pointing in my face going, Ah, you fucking bell end. The entire fucking club almost turns around. She goes, I'm so sorry it's been rejected. <laughs> and I no, but I just want to let it be known before I then tell you what I then did is that anything above a certain amount on, pounds. on Apple Pay, you can't you can't tippity tap tap tap. Yeah. So and, anything uh, above that. But let me tell you another thing is that Sam knows that. No, I don't. So I when do Sam that. was going through the menu and ordering seventeen hundred pounds <laughs> worth of booze, I'm not entirely sure what he expected to happen but because then... at that point the bill was seventeen hundred pounds. <laughs> All right. So then it doesn't work. What happens then, Sam? Well, then you just got to turn round to the person you know who can foot the bill. So I let you turn round. Pete's just having a good time on my left. I just tapped him on the shoulder. And went, Pete, Pete. <laughs> he went, what? I went. It didn't go through. Have you got your wallet? <laughs> You Funny enough, I already had my wallet in hand. <laughs> so then I go, fine, I'll get that. So then what happens is Sam and Beardy decide, fuck it, we might as well order another bottle of We've tequila. we got champagne as well, motherfuckers. Then ordered a champagne show to the table. The lot. Sparklers and everything. So that added to the fucking bill. Great, happy times for me. Do you know what happened? Because there was, there, was, there was a group of lads on a table <laughs> next to us and they had just had loads of sparklers come down and everyone's going, oh, I've gone, oi, oi, oi. And so me and Beardy were on our table going, fuck, these bastards want a war? We'll give them a war with Pete's card. So we literally went over to the went to the bartender and, hey, we'll get a whole load of bottles of champagne on our table, loads of sparklers, Pete. She was like, don't worry, it's already done. And so they come round and Pete's face when we're having a bottle cock off with a table full of footballers. <laughs> I spent the night doing that, yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, we had the best night ever. Um, oh, oh, no, so really quickly, actually, on that night, then there was a scuffle in, on the, in, like, near our table. And one of my favourite moments in the entire tour is, is I'm sat next to tour manager Luke, a.k.a. Beardy. He's fucked for his second night in a row. And he, to be fair on him, he's just looking around going, I just can't believe this is happening. He was so in shock that he had, like... Can I just tell you why Beardy went? Or what his excuse to, um, <laughs> to, look after to Team Wholesome was because he needed to keep an eye on the talent. <laughs> <laughs> the talent being us. He's hammered at this point because we keep, it's so funny, Just we were just giving him shots after shots after shots and then watching him try and look after us. It was fucking hilarious. Before Sam gets onto his scuffle, I also want to point out that during the champagne show that Sam had ordered to my card, Sam decided um, he would take his top off. Oh, yeah! And just wear a vest whilst dancing around on the thing. But you'll never guess, uh, if you have seen the tour, um, uh, what song the Champagne Show came out to. Yeah. 
Fucking sweet Caroline. <laughs> Mate, we went fucking for it. Even I went a little bit wild then because we I forgot for, for a minute it. how much it was costing. T-shirt over the head. Oh, come on. And then I got told to put it back on. I put it on backwards. But there was a scuffle on the table and I turned around to, to tour manager Luke. I went, Mate, you're going to have to deal with that. And he panicked and he literally went, I don't know what to do. I went, well, you've got to do something. And so he just straight, was so pissed at this point. He leant forward, stretched his arm out and went, Stop it! Stop it now! <laughs> and the girls were so shocked because he spoke like such an adult and they literally just completely stopped the scuffle they were having. The entire nightclub basically saw the whole thing and looked at him with a newfound level of respect. It was the best thing I've ever seen in my life from Beardy. So Beardy, if you're listening to this, well done, mate. You really kept it going there. That was my story. Okay. I love that night out. It was fucking sick. I had a really good time. And um, then I left. Yeah, and then Sam left. Um, well, yeah, Sam left. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour before the rest of us. Uh, it was then, still like 2.30 in the morning. Then me, Beardy and Ted left afterwards. But I told Sam, as I always do, Daddy P came into play. Please let me know when you get home. Sam didn't do that. Um, so I got back to the hotel and then was trying to call Sam. His phone was off. Couldn't work out where he was. I actually asked security at the hotel. said, have you seen this man? And showed him a picture. <laughs> they said no. I didn't sleep for three hours because I was so worried that Sam hadn't got home on his own. Um, genuinely, was non-stop calling him. And the phone was just off, and I thought, I don't know what to do. I tried to go to reception to ask what room he was in. They wouldn't tell me, oh my God. Um, because I was going to go and knock just to make sure he got home safe. Um, and then next day, he woke up to a message saying, Sorry, mate, passed out. Uh, I'd literally been asleep for about an hour, and then had to get back on the fucking... <laughs> back on the fucking bus to Cardiff. Um, How sweet is that, though, Pete, trying to figure out where I was? Have you seen this man? Well, because it, like, it worries me sometimes when you're on your own. Um, anyway. Great night. Sick night. One for the memories, that, though. One well, of these. it was. And it was a good end to what was an interesting performance in Manchester. Are we going to talk about it? I, I, I think it needs to be addressed. I think, oh, it's, time, yeah, I think it's time to tell my story. Manchester was a great show. However, there were elements of Manchester that were not okay. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I'm sorry, I shouldn't actually laugh because it's not okay. There is a part to the show where Sam goes into the audience um, and has just a thoroughly good time. When we were discussing this, I said, I don't want to go into the audience. I'll stay on stage and I will just do the, just the stagey bit. Um, there's a reason why I don't like to go into the audience and it was uh, highlighted in Manchester when the stage was stormed. It was stormed by people. One, two, three women got up. Suddenly there were how many? I think there were about 50 on stage at one point. That's what I could see from my bird's eye view of Pete just becoming sort of like an ant swarmed over like scarab beetles. Um, there was a lot of grabbing. Um, Where, there was a lot of grabbing. I can, Im I think you can probably imagine where that was. And listen, I, I love a good time. However, the grabbing was a lot. To the point where we've had emails from people at the th at, at, from the night with footage just in case we want to use it in any future legal battles, I imagine. Uh, yeah, there was an awful lot of grabbing. I was left. We weren't expecting the stage to be stormed because what happens when Sam goes out into the crowd? Everyone just likes to pat him on the head like a puppy. However, they don't pat my head. It was there was grabbing. There was a lot of grabbing. We obviously weren't prepared for this grabbing. Neither were the security staff in Manchester, who were actually very good. But we didn't expect the stage to be some. I had a hero. Was it me? Who came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. Wasn't expecting it. And that hero was Ben. Ben the carpenter. Oh, yeah. Benny makes the sets. Ben came and saved me. Uh, on stage whilst there was all sorts of stuff going on um, because it had got a bit wild on stage, hadn't it, Sam? Yeah. Um, Sam was just somewhere in the venue. I could hear him because he said his microphone just shouting my name. Yeah. <laughs> whilst, whilst I was being pulled down and fucking everything else, I could just hear, Pete, Pete, Pete. But he did nothing. No, I was just trying Not to Not a you... fucking thing. But like, you know when you can see something, you're so far away, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, he's so far away. However, when... Ben found me and reached through. He was like Moses parting the sea. 
he came through and, and grabbed me. What he'd done previous to that to get us off the stage was he'd pulled down half of the set <laughs> so that we could get through the back. Sam, um, although he says he, he couldn't get to me, had already parkour jumped over his fucking chair and ran through the back of the set, <laughs> straight past <laughs> straight past me, trampled. It, it was like the scene from Lion King when Mufasa gets trampled. Sam had just gone round the canyon. He's for his own at that point, to be ben, honest with you. Ben, bless him, he was like the Kevin Costner to my Whitney Houston in the bodyguard fucking dragged me out um, and it was it was a lot once we came off stage I'm jumping around being like that was one of the best shows you've ever done so thank you all it, we appreciate all your nice best stuff. show ever though by the way Manny was fucking out of this world without the penis grabbing but like it was really really good it yeah, was good. Such we enjoyed good time. it. Anyway. It was look, guys, we don't condone groping at all. Having said that, we love the excitement. Yeah. Love the excitement. The show was amazing. It dropped dead gorgeous. No, we it loved was. It. it dropped dead gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know. It went a bit fruity there. On the way back from Cardiff was where, look, it really taken its toll on, on everybody. Um and uh Pete in particular. Pete has raged at this point for five days straight. He's gone to town. No, I, funny enough, actually, no, that's not true. Because the first part of, as I mentioned last week, um, the first part of the tour, I was drinking considerably less than what I normally do. Which is terrifying. And I was really, really ill. So actually, what I thought I'd do for London, Manchester and Cardiff was I would go back to my normal life and drink quite a lot. And I've felt great ever since. So actually, um, going cold turkey on a tour bus for the first part of the thing where I was only having maybe six or seven pints of Guinness a night was, was actually a really bad idea because it was making me ill. I actually got back to myself at the weekend and felt great. So on the way back, Pete basically has burnt the candle. He's I tired. just lost my voice. I was tired. I was very He's tired. He's tired. So what Pete liked doing, it's funny because when you're on the tour bus, you kind of, for the first couple of days, you're like, oh, I can't go and use the fucking bunk beds. Like, I can't be that guy. Like, we're not those guys. By the end of it, I've never seen more people be like, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> Pete loved the bunk beds by the end of it. And there was one moment that really stood out to me that let me know the tour, <laughs> we need a break, was when Pete's having a snooze and uh, Beardy, Luke, the tour manager, comes upstairs and goes, my Tamagotchi's dead, guys. Um, should, we, should we have a funeral for it? And Pete, the night before, had said, look, mate, I think we should all gather around as a team and give it a bury. Well, and I'll tell you why I said that, because I felt responsible, because obviously Beardy had been out for two days straight and his girlfriend had given that Tamagotchi to look after for the tour. And I felt like because he'd come out with us and was obviously not <laughs> in a pretty good state. So he'd actually abused and neglected the Tamagotchi, Tammy, as we like to call him or her, whatever it is. Well, I think it died of old age, though. I don't too bad. Well, we were only six days into the tour, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure... Pretty sure when I was a child, Tamagotchis, you could keep him going for a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, he comes upstairs, right? And uh, I'm next door, so I can hear all of it. He comes upstairs, he goes, Pete, Pete, you know that, you know that burial you wanted to give it? He goes, um, I, we're just about to stop at a service station. Pete went, I'll oh, just fucking grow up, mate. It's a Tamagotchi. <laughs> And the night before, he'd been giving it so much. It's like, yeah, mate, look, we're all going to gather around as a team. We're going to bury it and all that shit. And then literally, when it comes to, like, the day after, and it's just a bit cold, everyone's tired, it's, like, early in the morning, fucking grow up, Luke. It's a fucking Tamagotchi. Sent me so bad. The yeah. real Pete has arrived. Um, well, I'd thought it through, and I just thought, nah, it's pathetic. <laughs> um, but also, this was, this was literally just 10 minutes after I had been woken with um, uh, Billy's rape alarm um, from Sam. So actually, I would have been quite up for the funeral um, had it not been for the fact that um, I just wanted to get the fuck off the bus at that point. So the longer we spent together, I think I may have killed someone. Um, but on the plus side, after Cardiff, we had a few days off. Yeah, and that's why we're so fresh now. We're feeling great. Ready for Birmingham and London, Plymouth and Dublin, which are our next four... Yeah, right. and that's a lot of travelling. Dublin, um, ho ho, baby. Dublin, I'm really excited Spank about. Spank your mama. Because Dublin, uh, I've got fucking two days off after, and I'm staying in Dublin, so I'm excited about that. Sam is supposed to be staying, but we shall see. Beardy's <laughs> staying. Oh, so is Video Ed. 
video ed is that it's going to be it's been, it's been fucking amazing so far literally it has been we actually put up a little soppy post afterwards just because we're halfway through and we just feel like it's gone really really well we did that i don't know if you saw that really cool picture that we asked the entire audience to do um that's... that was fucking brilliant by the way pete so politely went guys I, I hope you don't mind but would you mind just putting all your phone lights up we're gonna drop the lighting and uh, just take a quick photo and they all did it it was so nice but we'll be doing the same in birmingham on a bigger scale oh yeah for um, fucking goddamn sure we're coming in hot 6,000 in Birmingham um, anyway well that's it then that's the fucking tour update what a fuck oh also I just want to say uh, from from mine and I think all the team's point of view I think it is worth just noting that Pete's written this entire fucking thing and it's been fucking well received Re like I'm being genuine here honestly has written something that from what we've experienced everyone's absolutely loved I go on there, and I'm not joking, Pete is right, I go on and do fuck all. I just piss around, and all of that is because Pete has written such an amazing show. So massive, massive congrats to Pete. And that is on a very serious level. Fucking well done, mate. And you're getting quite a lot of props as well on some of the instances. People are starting to be like, I can't believe Pete wrote all of that. And he did. He's had no help whatsoever on that. I think it just needs to be said. But anyway, that's been the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can catch us on the socials and shit. YouTube, Snappy C, TikTok, Instagram, that's staying relevant, all that shit. And, oh, I sound like Pete there and all that shit. And, uh, and it's, yeah, it's been a pleasure. We're going to see you next week, baby, after even more live shows and even more stories. Bye, motherfuckers. Staying Relevant was an Insanity Studios production.